Hey guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the five things, five things, five things, five things, five things, five things that improve boost response. Okay guys, starting our list of the five things that affect turbo response rate, like how quick they are to spool up. Number one is engine displacement. And the reason for that is the bigger the engine, the more power it's going to make down low. And that's where we're concerned about turbo response. The more torque the motor makes down low, the better the boost response. And that will carry over into a lot of other things that we're going to talk about. But I'm going to illustrate this with three different motors. And you guys can take a look and see the power that's produced down low. This will directly directly affect the boost response for any size turbo. And we're going to talk about number two being turbo size because obviously they're related. So let's take a look at comparison. These are LS motors. They can be Ford, Chevy, imports, whatever. It doesn't matter. If you go up in displacement, nothing affects low speed power like a change in displacement. So let's take a look. We've got a 4.8 here. These are all stock motors. This is the curve on the 4.8. And we don't even really need to talk about the power numbers, but we can take a look at the difference in torque. This is a five a stock, that's a stock 4.8. This is a stock 5.3. This is a stock 6.0, and I we didn't load the 6.0 down, down as low, but we're really concerned with what's going on down there. You can kind of extrapolate. If you look at the differences in torque, you can see, you know, 50 foot pounds different between the 4.8 and the 5.3, and then you see another 60 or 70 between the 5.3 and the 6.0, and all that would continue if you extrapolate that down lower to 2,000 RPM, and that's what happens. That's why a, if you have, a, let's say, for instance, an S475 turbo, and you run it on all of these different engine displacements and you can see the difference in torque down low the biggest motor is going to spool up the turbo much quicker than the smaller motor because they make more low speed power now the downside of doing that is when you put any size turbo on the bigger motor you're going to run into potentially more back pressure. You're going to run into the limitation of the turbo a little bit quicker. And usually on a smaller motor, you can make more peak power with any given size turbo than you can with the bigger motor. Number two on the list of the things that affect the boost response of the turbo is actually the size of the turbo itself. And obviously the size relative to the displacement and or power output of the motor that you're putting it on. Let me give you an example. We ran a 4.8 liter here. It made a little over 400 horsepower NA. And then we ran two different size turbos on it. One was our GT45 that we use all the time. The other one was a much larger T6 hot side S475 from Summit Racing. Not only was it a T6, but it had a fairly big AR. So it was a 1.2, a 1.32 AR on the hot side. So much bigger hot side. And so you might think, well, I see that the Summit Turbo didn't come up nearly as good as the GT45. Why would you use that? Well, here's the thing. When you're selecting a turbo, the first thing that you normally think about is how much power can I make from that turbo? So in this case, if you want a thousand horsepower, you need to select a thousand horsepower turbo, which is about what this T6 S475 is. On the right LS combination, you could probably make a thousand horsepower with that turbo. But after you decide, yes, I need the thousand horsepower turbo, you also have to look at the other side of the equation. Now that I have the potential to make a thousand horsepower when I turn the boost up, what happens with boost response? And this is always the thing. This is when we were talking about the displacement of the motor. You need to pick that with your turbo sizing to get the best combination of ultimate power output and boost response. So you can see on this little 4.8 liter that we tested it on, the boost response on the big T6 S475, even though it has the capability of making a thousand horsepower, it's much less responsive than the smaller GT45 turbo, which did very well and has the potential to make probably 750, maybe close to 800 horsepower on this combination. So if that's all you're ever gonna run, make sure that you pick the smaller turbo or more importantly, size the turbo for the combination of peak power and response that you need on your combination. 
Number three in our list of things that improve boost response is actually heat energy. A lot of guys think that just exhaust flow spins the turbine, but you also need heat energy. And this is perfectly evident when I run every turbo motor that I run on the dyno at West Tech. When we make one run with the motor fairly cold or with the, the turbo and the exhaust fairly cold, and then make a second run after all we've done is put heat energy into it, we see a big change in response down low. So let's take a look at that exact test. We did back-to-back -back runs, and I can show you what happens to the low low speed boost response on this combination. It was a 5.3 liter that I got from the wrecking yard. It was an aluminum L33, so it was a good score from the wrecking yard. This is the motor that I did the comparison between the Truck Norris cam and the Sloppy Stage 2 cam with respect to boost response. We're gonna talk about cams in a minute, but this was equipped with the Truck Norris cam. It was the 5.3 liter L33, just had springs on it. It had a big S475 T6 turbo. It had an air to water intercooler and we ran it on E85. And here's what happened when we ran successive runs to show you that the only change basically was the heat energy in the turbo. So this was our first run. This is run number 27, again, with the Truck Norris cam and the, and the S475 turbo. Here's what happened when we ran uh, run 28. And all we did was ran run number 27, let off the throttle, made no changes to anything. We just let it breathe for about 10 seconds. And then I ran another run. And you can see the real important part is the load in and what's happening below 3,400 RPM. You can see once we had heat energy in the turbo, it was much more responsive. It came up, it made more boost, and it also made more low speed torque, more heat, more turbo response. And this also includes things like um, coatings and wraps and, and you know keeping temperature in the Y pipe. All of that stuff correlates to more heat energy into the turbo. Number four on our list of things that I've tested that affect boost response of a turbo application, obviously cam timing. Now the cam timing, it's hard to get big changes in low speed power from cam timing, especially way down low, like at 2000 RPM. But cam timing does affect low speed power and ultimately that affects boost response. If you remember back when I was talking about displacement, displacement adds low speed torque, which improves boost response. We look at the same thing with cam timing. I know a lot of guys want to tell you that there's magic valve events that are going to change what happens down low. The way that I look at it is if you have a cam, if you have have one camshaft that makes more low speed power than the other, that camshaft, forget about whether it's a turbo cam or an NA cam or a nitrous cam or blower cam, whatever it is, if it makes more low speed power, it's going to improve turbo response. And I recently did a test on that where I compared the sloppy stage two cam, very popular for turbo applications, although Elgin did not design that cam for a for turbo applications. It's not technically a turbo cam. I compared that to the Brian Tui Racing um, truck Norris cam and basically one of these cams makes more power on top one of them makes more down at the bottom and what I wanted to show is what happens with boost response when we change that power down low so this was our this was the 5.3 L33 that I got from the wrecking yard it basically just had springs in it and we ran these two camshafts in it we ran the sloppy stage 2 NA and then here is the truck Norris cam and you can see the Truck Norris cam in red made more low speed power. It made more power from 4,500 on down. And then the sloppy stage two being a bigger cam made more power on the top. This is kind of exactly what you would expect given the specs of these two camshafts. But let's take a look and see what they did once we added the turbo and you can kind of get an idea. All you need to look at is the fact that one of these cams, forget what they are, forget what their names are, one of the cams makes more low speed power. So right away, we know it's gonna have more boost response because low speed power equals boost response. So this is what they did once we added the turbo. And you can see same thing. We have the, the Truck Norris cam is in green on the turbo application. It made more power. We had our uh, boost controller on this thing. So we made the same amount of boost with both of these um, combinations. And the camshaft that made more peak power NA, the sloppy stage two, made more peak power under boost. The camshaft that made more low speed power down low NA also did that under boost. So the Truck Norris cam, smaller cam, more low speed power, better boost response. Number five on our list of things that affect boost response, intake manifold runner length. I've tested this many times and here is another perfect example. We had a 5.3 liter equipped with a healthy comp cam. It was a 54-454-11, 706 heads and valve springs. We ran it with two different intakes, both NA and with a turbo to illustrate that 
when you add boost to this, the same thing happens with runner length. So we ran first with an LS6 intake manifold, a relatively long runner intake and produced 468 horsepower, 412 foot pounds. Here's what happened when we added our short runner fabricated manifold, basically a sniper style fabricated manifold. It did indeed make power, uh, 486 horsepower, Torque was obviously down, but if you look, the longer runner made more power all the way from 3,000 RPM up to 6,100 RPM, and that would continue down lower in the RPM range. Here's what happened when we added our turbo to the combination. So we ran our LS6 with the, uh, LS6 intake with a turbo and then our short runner with a turbo. And again, the same thing happened. The longer runner made more torque down low, um, down in this case only down below 3,500, but that would continue down low all the way up to about 6,100 RPM. And then the short runner made more power out at the top. So longer runners make more torque down low and more torque equals more boost response. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure on how to improve the boost response or spool up that turbo in the five things all covered various ways to improve the boost response and two of them, turbo sizing and more heat energy. Other than those two, basically the other three dealt with improving the low speed power output of your combination. Now we did this obviously with increasing displacement, meaning that the bigger engine is going to have more low speed power. It's going to improve boost response. We also showed with intake runner length, longer runners improve boost response, and then cam timing. Any camshaft that makes more low speed power like everything else improves boost response, get more heat energy into it, and then obviously size your turbo correctly. Now all of those things will help you improve boost response on your turbo application, but I got five others that I have not tested and also honorable mention to nitrous if you hit a 50 shot down low it's definitely going to improve boost response so that's always an option but the other five things that i have not tested one is y pipe size if we have a smaller y pipe size will it improve boost response and i think yes this is especially important and useful on remote turbo applications the other thing potentially long tube headers long tube headers definitely improve the power output of a naturally aspirated motor, especially if they can improve it down low with long primary lengths, but how would that affect turbo? And I want um, turbo response, and I also want to test that. The other thing is a quick spool valve. I've never run a quick spool valve. It's used in racing where they divert all the exhaust energy into one side of a divided turbo. That can definitely improve boost response. Also, putting this thing up on the two-step, which is something that's very common on manual transmission cars, out of the drag strip, you put it on a rev limiter, you take away timing, you add a bunch of fuel, and all of a sudden, even with no load, you have a um, bunch of boost response, and then when you release that, you get you can take off. The other way is either sequential or compound turbocharging, where you use a smaller turbo to spool up quicker, and then have a bigger turbo kind of to take over on the big end. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.